Home Assistant 2025.5 lands today, the May release of course, and this month we are talking about UI improvements, new features to the automation editor, new angry voices, and a new Z-Wave network type. First up though, there is lots of really nice improvements to the backup system in this release, following on from all of the major overhaul that we saw earlier this year. And the first improvement is a really cool one, which is the ability to set individual backup retention on a per location basis. So say you want to keep 10 backups on your NAS, but three backups in Google Cloud. You can now do that in this release, which is great if you want to load up on backups on your local storage where you have buckets of room and then keep less on your cloud storage where you may want to stay under the free limits. To set that up, you can head over into settings and then into the little cog on one of your locations and then manage the retention period if you want to change it from the default. While we are in the settings, another nice feature is that you can now change the default behavior for the update toggle whenever you go in to apply an update. So if you click on an update, usually the backup before updating will be grayed out and you'll have to check it if you want to take a backup before updating. But now if you go over to settings, scroll down and then look for this new option, which is the backup preference, you can now change it from skip backup to backup before updating so this will now be the default whenever you want to do an update. On the subject of that backup before update option, another new addition is that you can now backup Home Assistant OS before upgrading if you want to just to make sure everything goes okay and you don't need to roll back to a previous version. Finally for the upgrade system, a nice quality of life improvement is that if you are using Home Assistant and then you go to restart Home Assistant when the system is in the middle of doing a backup, a pop-up will now appear to let you know that a backup is occurring before it restarts so that you don't accidentally end up with a non-existent backup. Nice. Next, there is this really neat feature that is now in the automation and script editor, which is a new copy and paste feature. So the way that this works is that if you find some code for an automation or a script on Reddit or on the forums or Discord or a blog, if you now copy that snippet of code or even an entire script or automation, and then you create an automation or a script and you simply press Control V to paste, even when you are in the UI mode, the editor will now handle it for you and import the code automagically. Now, if there is entity names or anything like that that was in the script that you copied that isn't applicable to your environment, you will need to go in and tidy those up. But this is a really cool way of being able to share code and reuse snippets from kind strangers on the internet without having to know exactly where to paste those snippets in YAML. There's also a really nice quality of life improvement to the automation and script editor too, which I personally really love as this one has always bugged me. And it's if you have ever used a template in an automation field, like for example, a notification, when you start typing the template, it would change the entire action into a YAML snippet, which was quite annoying if you wanted to change other fields. But now in this release, if you start entering a template into one of the boxes, it will just change the field itself to YAML and then the rest of your action remains in UI mode. A really simple change on the surface, but a really nice quality of life improvement. Next, there is another UI change when it comes to the entity picker. So anywhere you add an entity in Home Assistant, something like in an automation or on the dashboard when you are adding a card, when you click on the entity dropdown, the picker will look subtly different. And to help you find the device that you're looking for, where it will now display the area that the entity is assigned to, followed by the device it belongs with. And then over on the right side, it will give you the type of entity that it is. Next one I low-key really love is a new tool for network troubleshooting, something I actually needed very recently. And this is if you now head over to settings and then system and then network, and then you scroll down, you will see a couple of new panels for DHCP. 
SSDP and the one I'm most interested in is ZeroConf, which is the one that most people get tripped on up on when they are setting up a network or when they're trying to configure a network for the first time. And basically it just helps to check if devices are being discovered. Super nerdy, but I personally really love this new panel and yeah, super cool. This release also adds support for Z-Wave Smart Start, which improves the user experience by letting you scan a QR code on your new Z-Wave device to get it automatically added to Home Assistant. They also added support for Z-Wave Long Range, which is the, in my opinion, rather confusing new Z-Wave network type, which gets rid of the mesh network in favor of a single antenna, which, spoiler alert, Nabucasa teases in the release notes that they are working on, so looking forward to seeing that at some point. Speaking of Nabucasa, if you are a subscriber of Home Assistant Cloud and you use the text-to-speech voices available for voice, there are now thousands of new voice variants that can be used, including ones that have different emotions, styles and tones such as friendly, angry, sad and whisper, or ASMR as I like to call it. This would allow you to automate and choose different styles of voices depending on the situation that you're trying to automate. Finally, for the main stuff, one last quality of life improvement that I really like is that when you now go over and add a new device in the device menu, you will be able to rename that device during the setup of it instead of having to complete setup and then go into the device, find it and then rename it. It's just there as you set it up. Cool. As for the little things this month, firstly there is PDF support for the OpenAI Generate Content Service, the SwitchBot Roller Shade along with the Hub Mini are now supported, LLMs can now support reading to do and shopping lists, there has been support added for Matter 1.4 water heater devices, media players have a new action which allows you to search for media and finally there is a new template function which allows you to get the name of a device. In terms of new integrations this month, there is four new integrations in this release including the S3 integration which allows you to use Amazon S3 or any S3 API compatible storage provider as a backup target for Home Assistant, which is super cool. I imagine that will help to add more storage providers in the future that we can use as backup targets. We also have one integration now available to set up in the UI instead of via YAML. And as for breaking changes or backwards incompatible changes, we have a small to medium list this month. Nothing major other than that there is some changes to theming and fonts in this release. So if you are using a custom theme and it hasn't been updated for a while, you may find that things might not work properly. So just be sure to check that it is compatible before updating so that things don't get all wonky. Other than that, nothing major at all, but do make sure to have a check for yourself before updating. And that is about it for this release. Lots of nice quality of life improvements and a great release overall with something for pretty much everyone. Cool to see more improvements to the backup system. And I also really love the discovery panel now. Super nerdy and not helpful for most people, but I literally needed this a few weeks ago when I was troubleshooting a particular device. So I do love that one. Do let me know your favorite new feature down in the comments. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. Please drop this video a like and get subscribed and I will see you in the next video.